I'm Amy, sex educator, somatic sex and relationship coach, and sex shop owner. And I'm April, VP of an international high-end pleasure products company and boss queen sex toy mogul. We're best friends who make our own rules about who we are as sexual beings. With everything from how to be a badass in the bedroom to top tips for bringing your relationship to the next level, we have something just for you. So sit back, relax, and and enjoy enjoy the the show. Hello, everyone. Hola, que paso, personas. It's been such a long time since I've been with April. I love I know. you. I miss I you. I miss back you. from Miami. Well, Miami. Miami, Miami. Yeah, you were there for ten days. Damn. I was there for ten days, and it was. I, I absolutely adore Miami. I have to give a shout out to Floridians and Miami. But I was there during, uh, it wasn't a hurricane, Tropical Storm Alberto. Oh. And I got, uh, was all dressed all cute, ready to go out, dancing. And then Tropical Storm Alberto came and s- basically just annihilated. Alberto said, hell no. Yeah. So went back and actually just got into my swimsuit with my friend that I was with. And we got into our swimsuits and went on a lifeguard um, stand and just got in the eye of the storm. We're like, what you got, Mother Nature? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? There might have been some, you know, drinks involved in that. <laughs> drinks and things. Sounds like it. We also <laughs> brought a bottle of wine or two there on the oh, yeah. lifeguard stand. Yeah, mm-hmm. some tequila. I'm glad you're back. Yeah, I'm back. It's been a while, Chip. I now I'm you. in self-care mode, I have to say. Um, because I'm taking a little alcohol break. Yeah, so she's not drinking the wine, but I'm drinking me some Margins wine. I love Margins wine. And she's, are you jealous of my glass? I am actually <laughs> jealous. And Does it look good? Although it's five o'clock somewhere, I'm feeling really good about my non-drinking right now, but I am envious. Yeah. I mean, I I took, I, I'm going, I took about 10 days off from drinking oh, nice. and um and and drinking's not too big of a thing for me and it, i mean you were at a trade show for in, it was 10 days in miami of, that's yeah. what you do so that's all you do and yeah. and party yeah salsa so for me this nice cold glass of <laughs> <laughs> chenin, blanc. chenin blanc by margins wine is delicious if you all want to learn more go to marginswine.com it's women own raw meaning organic wine um, and it's so it's yummy. delicious. Anytime people come over, because I, I have some in the fridge. You have like a case in your fridge. I have a case <laughs> in the fridge. Um, they're always like, what is this wine? Because it's like unfiltered. It looks almost like a sour beer. If anybody's ever had sour beer before, it has that kind of unfiltered look to it. But the taste is super smooth, not sweet. It's light. It's a perfect summertime wine. And it's fully summer now. Oh, yeah. It's nice. It's out. like been like sunny and beautiful in Santa Cruz. I have a nice tan going on. Not from Miami because of the tropical storm. I didn't get beach time, but yeah. Santa Cruz. Yeah. It's, tan, my tan it's, it's beautiful. I know. Hey, you have a testimonial to read. I do. And P.S. Um, it's been a while since Amy and I have been together, but um, we've been getting a lot of emails, a lot of people reaching out and commending us for what we're doing. And we really appreciate that and value all of you. So to our listeners, thank you for continuing to listen for supporting our cause and our podcast we absolutely adore you and this testimonial comes from a fan um, named danielle and um she said we could use her name my name is danielle and feel free to use my name if you're going to read mine out on the podcast omg that would be a dream come true After just recently finding and listening to your podcast, I have found it to be an amazing resource for me and my current relationship. Through listening to y'all's podcasts, I have learned so many important things about communicating openly with my boyfriend and just asking for what I want, working through my childhood trauma, I had an abusive father, learning and having a better understanding of not only my love languages, but my boyfriend's love languages as well. My boyfriend of five months is an immigrant from Nigeria, and your episode on love languages practically saved our relationship. For Valentine's Day and also for his birthday, I had gotten him gifts. Every time I would give him one, he would act weird and not accept the gift. I learned after listening to y'all's podcast that not only because of his culture, but also because of his love language... Uh, is why he reacts this way. He doesn't like to receive gifts, but instead needs close, intimate, personal time and touch. 
Without y'all, I would have felt completely lost and hurt. Y'all are amazing, and the work that you do is absolutely life-changing. Please do not stop doing what you do. Love your super fan from Huntsville, Texas, Danielle. Oh, that's, that's so sweet. sweet. And I love the story. And thank you for the personal story, Danielle. That's really amazing to share. And hopefully our other listeners will find value in that as well. So thank you. Yeah, and if you all y'all are wondering about love languages, you can go back. I don't even know what episode it is, but go look in our episode um arsenal online and you can find the love languages episode to learn more about what she was talking about and you could read the book as well the five languages of love by yep. gary chapman chapman yeah that, yes gary chapman yeah it sometimes get, gets a little um spiritual if you yes. will christian christian uh, undertones christian undertones but it's it has such beautiful messages and I listened to the audible book of that and it really took a lot from it so thank you danielle and we also would like to read a sex question yeah i'm gonna read a sex question and also that, that love languages book just oh. so you all know we have it at pure pleasure if you would like to purchase it and read the actual print version it is available at purepleasureshop.com it's called the five love languages and you can use coupon code shameless pp in all caps and get 15 percent off too and that book is it's an easy read it's not Super a long easy. book you can probably read it a few times cover to cover so i think the audible is only four hours long so I listen to it quickly but the it's nice to have a paper copy yeah because um you can also give it to someone you love yes give it to someone you love and After it applies it. All to things other than um the relationship or sexual relationships it can work with people that you work with or family members Children. as well yeah mm -hmm. yeah um okay so this episode we are going to get into we have a guest speaker and we're going to be talking about food and sex and how they're related and how you can use food to up your sexual uh, experience or sexual being of y within you. Um, but before we do that, I have a couple, we have some announcements. We do a sex question and, um, and just maybe like a little share. Cause I have a little piece of information I want to share mm. everyone. I'm not pregnant. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would be, I would be shocked yeah, if that came out. Be like, you didn't even <laughs> tell me that before the podcast. Sorry. And I peed myself. Ew, she, she's <laughs> like, fuck. Oh. All right. Anyways. Um, so yeah, let's do the sex question first. Uh, by the way, everyone, we're so behind in sex questions. This one came to us April nineteenth. It is now early June, so <laughs> we are we are getting to them slowly, but soon we might have to find out a new way to but do it. But a good this. if if you are a person who's reached out to us and who hasn't received an answer and um, are kind of wondering when that will happen, but are dying to have the answer, you could go to the Juice Box app. Oh yeah, because um, Amy and I, mostly Amy, because. She has all the credentials, but Amy and I are um, actually available and there's it, more details. Yeah. We did a podcast on it, but it's actually an awesome tool. Yeah, you can go if you go to Juicebox app and you use the shameless sex code. If you go to our website, it's all on there. Go to shamelesssex.com and we have the link to the Juicebox app on there. And there's a code where you get 60 percent off and you get um, coaching from afar. And you can either work with us or with someone else, too, and they can answer your questions. There's I faster think than what a, we're doing there's a, more than 20 i don't coaches. remember yeah, there's a lot yeah of coaches there. to choose from so if we're not giving you the answers you want or you want somebody with a different experience you can find um and select uh, the person that is a fit for you so well okay question right. time this one is about queefing queefing oh man i can't April's wait i can't there. wait so this person says, ever since having my daughter, I queef like crazy, especially in doggy style. It's a little embarrassing, but it doesn't bother me too much. But sometimes a lot of air gets trapped in and can be painful. I'm also wondering how that can happen. I don't remember ever queefing more than once or twice before I had my daughter. Is this a pelvic floor weakness thing with strengthening my pelvic muscles? help stop it from happening? It doesn't bother me with, with my husband, but we are open to bringing someone someone in the bedroom with us and I'd be uncomfortable do do doing doggy style with them. Ah, oh, a third party. I got it. Um, my question is, do you think that they do are doing a lot of in and out? Because that's when I queef when it, there's in it traps air in there. Right. Yeah, and then I'm like, in. especially afterward, but I've had it during where I've, so that's, and that's what doggy style is a lot, usually a lot of in and out. Right. Like so that's what I'm assuming. It's not fair to make an assumption. However, it, uh, I don't know, Amy, you probably know best, but I would say it's probably a pelvic floor thing. But if it's an in and out motion that you're doing, there's your solution. Less in and out. If yeah, you more don't grinding. Want queef, more grinding. Yeah. Or just keep the, keep the, um, the genitals of your partner. Did they say husband? 
husband yeah uh of your husband keep the in, in inside yeah don't um yeah less remove it. thrusting in and out i mean it sounds like yes something changed in your body and of course that makes perfect sense if you had a vaginal birth um i've even heard of uh someone having um a, an abortion and actually changing this is this is someone that they did like the pill version of abortion abortion oh. and the part their body your body essentially contracts so much that it's almost as if you're not like you're kind of giving birth ish and um and it changed the muscle structure of their vaginal canal too so things do change when the vaginal canal goes through a lot of contractions so yeah it probably is just um a uh, in terms of the muscle structure there and um either like we've talked about on the pelvic floor health podcast either uh it's a maybe a weakness thing or the pelvic floor is too tight um, too tight would mean if you're having issues with bladder control and you can't hold in urine um, that's often a sign of too tight, but yeah, if this is something that you're worried about, like April said, changing the way you're moving. So less thrusting, more grinding, um, and then starting to work on the pelvic floor strength to just see if that shifts. Um, another option is also just own it. And if you play with another person to let them know before, Hey, this happens sometimes so that when it happens, you're not like, Oh shit, there's this embarrassing thing that we didn't address. So if you let them know, like, I guess, and it, I mean, most people, unless they're like, 15 <laughs> you know when it first starts happening to when people are younger and having sex like oh my god did they just fart you know but when people are older they know what a queef is they yeah. know that air gets trapped in the pussy and it makes a noise and it's kind of funny it is funny i mean there no matter what it always makes me laugh yeah me too i laugh too. i can't like, be sexy and be like oh you know yeah. like, oh sorry mine usually if, if it happens it would usually be like what you're saying April, from some thrusting in a very specific position and i could feel the air going in mm -hmm. i'm like oh it's stuck in there now it's got to come out so when i move and it's like yeah <laughs> and then we just laugh and keep going i know totally yeah. and sometimes it happens afterward a lot like uh, after a session is over uh, especially if it's there has been air trapped in for a while uh, i'm like wow it's queef central today. Yes. <laughs> No. Queen McGee over here. I can hear those slapping out of there. I think it's just, it's good. The things that are embarrassing about sex, but that you like either can't really do too much about or just kind of their natural things to just own them and not act like they shouldn't be happening. That it's that you're gross because you're doing this natural thing. Right. Um, and, and maybe la and laugh about it, have some humor. Or if it's something that was really bothersome, then you could, there's like April saying, you know, positions or, um, what the hell is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm seeing weird things. Is that, is that jizz? Just kidding. <laughs> Amy has jizz on her dress. <laughs> the, it's an unidentified white. Oh mark. god, snail Una trail. I snail like trail. that. I like that term, unidentified. <laughs> what the hell is that thing? An unidentified snail trail. Um. Okay. So I want to. So I think that answered that question. Correct. Yeah, it was good. good. Awesome. Thank you for reaching out. Thanks, question. Thank you for your sex questions, everyone. Even though it takes us an eternity to get back to you, we still do appreciate them, and we do flag them and plan to get to them in our emails. Where we're going in order from whatever is the oldest. We just keep yeah. answering that as time goes. Um, okay, so I I want to share a story. I'd like to share a little story for you. Oh, um, something that I just recently discovered. So, so I've been looking at certain things with my um, my own desire. And my partner the other day was talking about um, something I said. I said something, and he was like, "Oh wow, I'm like a little turned on from that." And I thought to myself, I'm "Like that doesn't really happen to me. It hasn't happened to me for a long time. Where I just get this like spontaneous feeling of turn on from something I hear or see." I don't get that like, oh, like my pussy's all of a sudden um, pulsating. It doesn't, it's not, it isn't something that, that happens to me very often. And it's been, it's been a while. Like it's definitely has happened, but it's been a while. And so I've been spending a lot of time looking at that. And long story short, I just had this, this realization and this kind of this rewiring where I, um, I realized that my, at some point uh, in the last couple years, I think it was when I was going through like th a lot of heartbreak and things like that with my um, partner who we broke up and now we're back together. I think it became really, um, it be became unsafe to feel everything, like all the feelings of hurt and sadness um, and emotional pain. And, I, and this is my theory is that I like, I turned it down significantly. My body's ability, ab ability to feel all these things without even noticing that I was doing that. It was just kind of like, a coping mechanism mm -hmm. and that in turn also turned down a lot of like ecstaticness and aliveness that comes um that that is a part of life but also is related to like desire and that like carnal hunger for you know for sex and or for just like for things like that and um 
and I haven't really known how to turn it back on. And I just had this kind of re- this rewiring the other day where I had this conversation between my mind, because I'm a very heady person, um, where two things happened. One, my mind gave my body permission to take over you know, ag- again. Like my mind has been running the show. And I think this will come back to when I had an ab- abortion, when I got pregnant on the IUD. I became really heady during that time. My body wasn't safe to be in because... Um, my body, my mind didn't agree. You know, my body is like, we're not doing this thing. My mind's like, no, we're not. We are not ready for this. And this was like totally unplanned. We were on the IUD. Okay. This is not in the schedule. <laughs> um, and so in that time I came up, I left my body and significantly went into my head. So it's, it's as if my body was like, we can't do this mind. You're going to take over. And I've been operating from that ever since. Mm-hmm. And I felt this really powerful shift when my mind allowed my my body like invited my body to step up to the plate again and and to say like okay you can it's safe now you can feel everything and you can start operating the show I don't have to operate everything and and just felt this shift like I feeling I'm feeling like I can feel more um like feel more physically feel more of my entire body by just realizing that and giving this permission um, and I just wanted to share that because this is just like part of my journey and I, it's just really powerful to, to realize that these things that happen as coping mechanisms, and again, this is just a theory, but, um, I'm feeling like it's really powerful and really helping me to come back into my body. And I know a lot of people, clients that I work with are people that send us emails. Um, this might, might apply to you because a lot of folks are like, I don't know how to be in my body. I don't know how to be present for sex. I'm not feeling desire. And, um, and so th- it really might be that your body w- wasn't safe and at some point you left your body, your body wasn't the operating system anymore, it was from the head and maybe there's a way that you can renegotiate to make your body feel safe and invite your body to take over um, and start running the show instead of your 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 brain. And um, the other thing that came up for me too is, which Esther Perel talks about is um, a lot of times in sexless marriages, and I'm in no way I'm in a sexless relationship, but um, sex can some all of a sudden be reframed to not be for you anymore. And that, I think that happened to me a little bit as I wasn't feeling a lot of desire and as my mind was running the show. Um, I was still, I've still been having sex, but a lot of times I felt like I wasn't doing it for me. And, and that's like, not a good place to come from because the more I would do that, it it would contribute to the problem of, um, I'm having sex to please my partner or to keep our, the connection, our relationship instead of like, how can I ask for certain touch or, um, not even just sex, but just have touch that I'm related to sex that is, is for me and to go about sex from that way. And so I've just had these like reframings of, and realizations of like, I have to have sex that is for me, not just for someone else. Um, or it can be equally for us. Um, but if it is coming from a place where it is just for the other person, I need to find ways to make it for me. Um, and that might include not having sex. It might be like how could just making out or whatever. Um, and so that that reframing of I'm going to make sex mine again and be more take more time to check in myself with what I truly want and ask for that. Um, and then the other piece of the rewiring of letting the body take over. So I just want to share those things because these are really big for me. The thing, realizations that I just happened. I guess that's my sex life update. <laughs> no, I'm more connected good. to my body. That is good. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to connect to my body more. I'm doing a good a good job. <clears throat> I really focus on Well, you feel and you feel moment. drive and like right. and horniness and um, I have to tell you that being off the alcohol for a few days has significantly increased the sensitivity of my vulva, which I know. I knew <laughs> that was going to happen, yeah. but I was like, "Oh man, I'm able to really have more like enjoy the the sensation and the sensitivity and all of it without having to you know grind on my vibrator for an hour yeah <laughs> it's yeah. like oh and i have an announcement to make what you got no i'm not pregnant either okay sweet <laughs> um that would be immaculate conception <laughs> considering um so i decided so I, I realized, and maybe you've already realized this about me, Amy, but <laughs> <laughs> but I realized that porn has become like this private little thing that I have done since I was a kid. And it's like this, and my partner actually brought it up because I was like, he's like, oh, I was in Miami. And he's like, what were you doing? And I was like, oh, well, I just watched some porn. He's like, really? He's like, you always watch porn by yourself and then you don't like to talk about it. And I was like, you're right. And he's like, 
you know, you could watch porn with me. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's mine. It's <laughs> mine. And it was like this exchange of kind of us going back and forth. And then I finally realized like I have shame about watching porn because I used to hide. So my mom had this VHS tape that was um, old soap operas. And so I was watching it innocently one day. I was probably seven. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, seven. Oh, and I came across his porn. I remember it, Harley Davidson dudes, Whoa. like th- six of them, and they were like all going and like doing cunnilingus to this woman that was like on this pool table. I mean, wonder like, you like the gangbang. Back to back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I totally remember it, and I was like, "Is such a secret." And then my mom probably found out that this had porn on it and like hid the tape. And then I found it. She never knew that I watched it. She probably knows now. She listens mom. to the podcast. Oh. I'll tell her. I have no shame in that. But so this became this regular thing in this one porn that I'd watched for years. Then, and I knew where she hid it, and she always hid it in the same place. So she was not that creative. <laughs> um, and so, been conditioned. I've never watched porn with partners really, ever. And it's really awkward when I do. I used to have porn parties at my house. Remember when I had to watch for p- pirate pleasure? We watched pirates. Yeah, and I yeah. just had porn in the background of the green door or whatever, yeah. the old porn. But it wasn't like watching it. It was just in the background as kind of almost fun. And so I'm taking a break from porn. Yeah. For oh, a while. how long? I don't know. A break, a break from some wine and porn. I oh know. My, all this your vices. <laughs> I know. It's like, I feel as though it's it's a moment where I had a realization. I don't think it's a problem that I have. I just question why has this been such a personal, private thing that I've done for so many years. And that um, it. I sometimes do think that it um, takes away from... My exp- what I experienced with my partner mm-hmm. as well because, again, that dopamine kind of quick, connection. Yeah, quick dopamine rush. The quick rush. dopamine rush. And so, you know, it is it is something that I'm, I'm comfortable with sharing. I didn't plan on sharing it, but I figured, why not? So there you go. I have, I have um, an expiration date to my non-wine drinking, but I don't to my porn watching. I, I'm going to take a break for a while. A significant break. Yeah. yeah. Good. Just to see, I mean, unless I'm really you know feeling like i need it but i don't need it by any means yeah well i think and that's the thing with with you know porn and sex toys and various things is like when it becomes something that we need and we can't get off without it then it's something to look at um or in a lot in because that's just a story in your head i can't get off without it and so it's like okay i need to work on i want to work on this so that i don't need this thing and now it's just a bonus and that's the intention of having those things well it came up because my partner was he never like masturbates. He, at least he, he tells me, he's like, I just don't masturbate. He's like, you know, whatever. We've had this conversation. I was like, really? Why not? So, but he did while I was away and I was like, oh, did you watch porn? He's like, no. I was like, you just use your brain. <laughs> he's like, so creative. Yeah. He's like, April, that's what a lot of people do. Yeah. And You're like, so oh. I had like this aha moment and then we had this conversation. So interestingly enough, that's how it all stemmed from, I mean, was that conversation and I feel good about kind of um, moving into the space of not watching porn porn I, free i like that wine free i'm so you guys won't get to hear about taxi cab porn for a while no. Bummer. i'm off that for a minute i watched the same ones too many times just burnt out it's not doing i've been it watching anymore. stepmom porn while i was like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> threesome stepmom porn with the stepdaughter i don't know what's wrong with me sometimes <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you at all. You're perfectly imperfect. No, I know. For um, sure. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing yours. Of course. Such a free space to share. All right. I have a couple announcements and then we'll dive into our podcast. Announcement number one, I am teaching a weekend retreat for lovers. It's actually called Shameless Intimacy. And it's Ooh. not with April, although I would love to teach it with her. Um, but it is with a special guest who is of the male body. And... It is here in Santa Cruz in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It is July 7th and July 8th. It's a two-day retreat. It's not overnight. So it's a Saturday, Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and this retreat will go over everything from communication skills with partners, how to speak lovingly during challenging times, getting clear on what you want and how to ask for it, how to show up as a strong partner, how to speak your partner's love language while getting clear on, of and asking your own, how to cultivate more erotic energy, tantra, conscious erotic touch, et cetera, et cetera. If you're interested in uh, participating in this retreat, we're only taking six couples. 
um, and it's all orientations and, and genders are invited. Um, you can sign up at purepleasureshop.com and look up Shameless Intimacy, a retreat for lovers uh, and probably get that sooner than later because it's very limited. Uh, other announcement number two. This is a Burning Man announcement. April, I might go to Burning Man now. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> so we were driving the truck through the desert with my partner and I am, and we're just like, wait. It reminds us of Burning Man. So we have this uh, this new thing. That our issue with Burning Man is just it, that it isn't what it used to be, and everyone says that. So what we decided for this year, that we will go to Burning Man, but we will go on conditions. Um, one, when we go there, we're going to uh, be giving in a bigger way because it is, it is all about gifting and all about um, like community and sharing and without really expecting anything in return. And so we'll go there and every day we will do, um, a different, a new act of giving. And what sometimes it'll be like, I think we're going to set up, yeah, I'm not going to tell you all the ideas of what we're going to do. But, um, number two, we want our, our uh, entry in there to be based on the same philosophies. Um, so in long story short, we're essentially looking for someone to gift us a ticket mm. to Burning Man. And if you gift us a ticket, um, we have plenty of gifts to offer you as well. <laughs> I'm a sex and relationship Are you coach. Looking for two tickets or I just have one? sex toys. Um, we just I mean, two is great, but one works. Oh. Um, and so any so any sort of gifting that can can um can get us there, we just we just really want to. We we want to try this in a different way to see if the spirit is still there, um, and because mm. we last year we just weren't really feeling that, and um, and then we will go there and really give in a big well, way. I'm trying to go to Italy for a wedding. So if anyone wants to gift me a <laughs> ticket to Italy, no, I'm just so kidding. If anyone wants to gift <laughs> April a ticket to um, Even the Italy, space. yeah, if you want to gift me a ticket to Burning Man, you can go ahead and send I'll it be to. A, I'll be in that wedding. Well, um, I'll at that wedding. I'm not in the wedding, but while you're at Burning Man, oh sweet, yeah, yeah, it's, it's that same time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that April sounds I, nice. Yeah, I, and we're yeah. It's just it's just we're just trying to do something in a different way. And I'm super done with festivals, but Burning Man is not a festival. It's like it's just a whole different. If you've never been, it is just its own own thing. And I it's I, a journey. I mean, there's ups and downs every year. I think yeah. that. Oh yeah, least. there's I've always struggles. Yeah, there's it's there's always beautiful and always really hard. But last year just felt like it was harder to find the magic and. Uh, my favorite experience that I had last year was when we just set up a, a grilled cheese stand out in the middle of Playa and made grilled cheeses and gave them out to everyone. You know, handed out 200 grilled cheeses and people were stoked. And so I, I really want to uh, cultivate more of that, of this place where there is no money and it's all about giving from your heart just for the act of giving and not expecting not res- anything in return. Not expecting anything yeah. in return. But just if you gift give me a ticket, I have good things to give you too. There but you I would, go. <laughs> but it's not bartering. So, <laughs> all right. Um, anyways, that's my other announcement. I like it. Last announcement before we begin this podcast. Um, this podcast is with an awesome woman named Melissa. I, as we said, it's on sex and food, and we didn't mention uh, that she has a um, a code or a special offer for people who work with her because she is a holistic health coach. Um, who can do some work around sexuality too. But if you mention shameless sex by going to her website, which was what honeybeehealth.net. Honeybeehealth.net. Honey, net. Um, so if you mention shameless sex, you get 10% off of her happy healing if program. If you send her a query, yes, as which they would, call them in the UK. A if a you query. send her a query, just mention shameless sex and she'll give you 10% off of yep. her healthy... Happy he- healing program. Happy healing pro- It's like a six-month program that yeah. she'll talk a little bit about during the show. So... Yep. So, um, yeah, I guess let's uh, dive on in. Let's do it. Let's get there. All right, everyone. So as promised, we are going to dive into our episode today on food and sex and how food can be sexy. So uh, let's, let's do a little intro on our wonderful guest speaker here. Uh, Melissa Roberts has a passion to empower individuals to heal their bodies by themselves, lead healthy lifestyles, hold lasting positive relationships, and ultimately achieve total mind, body, and spirit balance through self-love, appreciation, and care. Melissa studied at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York, where she acquired her certification as a holistic health and wellness coach. Now as an entrepreneur, Melissa is committed to serving her community through her private practice, Honey Bee Healing, Holistic Wellness and Health Coaching Services. Welcome, Melissa. Hello, hello, ladies. How are you? Great. How are you? So I'm so good. I'm so excited to be chatting with you girls. April, I miss you. I want to give you a big hug. I know. <laughs> Melissa and I have actually known each other for how many years? For a long time when oh. you used to work in distribution. 
Yes, and, and you at Fun toy, Factory. You know, yes, I know. Like, back in the totally day, different lives. <laughs> and you were always such a bubbly, wonderful human to interact with at the shows oh. when you're all drained. I was like, oh, you're like a cup of coffee. I love it. <laughs> I'm your caffeine boost when you haven't had one yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. So it's good. Go to, it's Thank good to you. not have you physically here, but it's nice to actually hear your voice. So thanks for thanks for taking some time and and talking to us about what you specialize in, which is a really great way to kind of go from you went from sex toys to food and sex and holistic right. healing yes. that's awesome absolutely thank you yes those are wonderful compliments and um you as well you're always just you both are just such a breath of fresh air and I listen to your podcast and I just love what you guys are doing so much I it's really more of the movement that we need I feel like um in in our lives everybody's lives you know we're all told kind of what to do and how to do it and really you know, this work is about figuring out what works for you, you know, and, and um, kind of tuning out all that static and listening to your yourself and your body and what you sexually need or emotionally need or anything in, in that respect. So I love what you guys are doing and you guys are just muscling through it and it's so consistent and I just love it. It's organically growing to just a beautiful thing. Oh, thank you. Well, the podcast is over. Thank you for joining yeah. us, everyone. <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we came here for. You um, know, I can't I can't hear that song, um, A Whole New World, without thinking of that epic karaoke uh, duet we watched together. Oh, <laughs> April that, loves karaoke. April. Christmas party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so much fun. Anyhow, but yes. So um, thank you, ladies. Tell us some more about your work, because I know that we have some questions that um, we want you to answer. But we also tell our listeners about um, the work you do and a little bit more about yourself. OK, cool. Oh, I just got the volume up on you guys. That helps so much more. OK, perfect. Um, yeah. So uh, you, you mentioned I was in uh, sexual health and wellness product distribution for many, many years. And um, I loved what I did. I loved counseling clients and, um, you know, kind of coaching them around best practice purchases for their businesses and, um, getting them to a place where they felt confident and, um, you know, savvy in the education around their product for their customers. And I just love, love doing that so much, but something in me, um, started losing the passion of really selling product per se, and more so kind of intuitively, um, tapping into my clients, um, emotional, uh, uh, um, uh, emotional situation where they are at, you know, sometimes they'd call me with a problem and it had nothing to do with, um, you know, the actual store or, you know, product being out of stock or anything like that. It was really more about their personal life and what was going on and how the stress of that was causing, you know, um, trials and tribulations and, you know, situations in their business. And so just that emotional support and being there for clients kind of really resonated with me. And, um, became, uh, my passion to just really kind of help them hone in more on, um, a more profound level, um, how to, you know, run their businesses and help people on a more profound level, have sexual empowerment, not just through a product purchase, you know, having that, you know, you know, when you buy something, you feel so good, you bought it and you use it. And then, you know, maybe a couple of days later, you don't even think about it anymore, but being able to help them on a deeper level, understand how they can be sexually empowered in their lives and in their relationships. So I kind of just grew from there. I stepped away from the corporate sales, you know, back, um, background that I was in and, uh, stepped into more of a holistic healing setting where I did go and get my certification and just started counseling people, you know, over the phone or over Skype, um, just on ways that they can, um, impact their lives themselves and not necessarily have to look for a uh, traditional medicine, um, you know, Western traditional medicine to, you know, suppress symptoms, uh, and things like that. So really my clients are people who are kind of fed up with, um, that, uh, uh route that going that route where they're getting a prescription to suppress the headache or the, the body cramping or whatever it is. And they're looking for another Avenue. And so that is really what I love to talk about. And food has, everything to do with that. And so it kind of stemmed from a sexual background, but, um, helping people understand that, you know, your sexual empowerment, your sexual being, your sexual body really can come from the fuel that you feed your body with and what you nourish your body with. And so we know that the number one thing we nourish ourselves with is what we eat and drink. You know, that's 
A hundred percent. We always need to have to have something to eat and drink in order to thrive. Right. So, um, that was a big, big thing for me. And, um, personally I struggled, um, with my own, um, uh, issues, um, sexually, uh, I had some female issues that were impacting my sexual uh, lifestyle and um, it wasn't very clear to me until um, I was, you know, in my late twenties and all the symptoms started to be like kind of snowball into this, wow, what is happening? And um, I really just started to pay attention to that. And when I was able to find, um, when I was able to really listen to my body and figure out what it was, it had everything to do with food and what I was putting in my body and what I was putting on my body. And I kind of experienced, you know, a breakthrough, if you will. And it just empowered me so much to get out there and help, you know, not, not, um, only, uh, women, uh, you know, every individual for sure, but especially women, because I'm so in tune with how that made me feel and, um, how it just took my confidence down. It just did everything to me, um, that was in a negative aspect, you know? And so, helping women kind of reignite that passion to do good and be better and have better and feel better for themselves. Um, that passion, that drive it starts really within, you know, and, and, and wanting it. And it starts with, you are what you eat, right? Yeah. Because you do. You really are what you eat. You eat a lot of carrots, you become orange. April is a glass of wine <laughs> <laughs> or a cup of coffee. Yes, this is true. <laughs> Yeah, these days I think I'm more like an avocado and a banana for some reason. I'm I'm liking that. I'm I'm oatmeal and granola. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) So how? So how? Can you tell us about? So how does food really relate to sex? Like in regards to the physical body, the emotional body, um, desire, and how how is it? How is it interrelated? Like, what are some of the, the themes there? Sure, sure. So, um, you know, just again, ba- back to that staple that, you know, food, you are what you eat, you know, of course, food relates to sex, because food is the energy source that our bodies thrive in order to perform at our best, right? So especially as an instinctively sexual being, it, you know, it, it's our natural instinct to be sexual. So if you're not having that drive or experiencing that um, desire, it, it's obviously something that is, a, there's a source to what, where that's coming from. So everything we decide to eat or drink has a significant impact on your body. And the more conscious quality choices that you make to consume, only what helps you thrive will directly translate into your day, week, month, year, and for the rest of your life. So it relates because sex makes us feel so good and food makes us feel so good too. Um, but food also has the ability of making us not feel so good. And so if we eat more nutrient dense and whole foods, you know, in turn, our body will give us that sexual confidence and that drive, which will leave you feeling your absolute best. And when we feel our absolute best, you're better capable of sharing those positive, uh, energies and joy and pleasure with others. Um, and so for the physical body, you know, holistic healing is the belief that given half a chance, your body can heal itself by itself. And um, it's the belief that food is medicine also. So if we are mindful of what our bodies are telling us, we can be preventative in many, many ways. And we can also heal, like in my situation, from long-term illnesses. And so if we listen closely, our bodies can show us kind of a roadmap for what we need to feel sexy. If, If your desire, like I mentioned earlier, for sex is, you know, low, for example, there may be an underlying issue that we can find that either is being caused by food or uh, can be reversed by food and and give you like as sort of a cure for that, if you will, and enhance your desire. So, you know, one method I like to share with clients is Chinese medicine, which is a practice of, you know, yin and yang, and that there's a necessary order of balance that must occur to thrive in your body. And so every organ, you know, there's like a a Chinese medicine body map, and it shows you how every organ uh, internally has an ideal food that can help that organ thrive. And then also, if you're if you have a pain, you know, cramp or, you know, discomfort or, uh, you know, inflammation, there's also, uh, you know, um, this map will help you understand kind of why you're suffering and what foods could be conducive or be the result of why you're suffering. So I love that food relates so well to the physical body in that way. And and emotionally, you know, love is so powerful. I think, you know, living in the constant vibration of love is where everyone should be. And that people, you know, 
for example, people who you see are just madly, deeply in love. They, they seem to live these long, happy, healthy lives, and they're surrounded by family and friends who cherish them. So as an example, it seems like when we're loving ourselves and we're living in that passion and that positive energy, our bodies respond to that. We want better for ourselves. We tend to look, want to look our best. We work out more, we eat healthier and we're more conscious and sensitive to living in that vibration of love because it feels so incredible. And once it starts to kind of back up a little bit, we, you know, we, 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 we inherently want to strive back towards that good feeling, you know? And so on the flip side, when you're unhappy, we can be so mean to our bodies, right? So like, you know, the, the stereotypical woman who gets, uh, uh, in a bad breakup, you know, why is it the need to sit in front of the TV and eat a whole tub of ice cream and beat up yourself emotionally and tell yourself, oh, you're, you're the, you're the worst person in the world and you'll never make it. And the world is ending, right? <laughs> so emotionally we can eat to hurt or love ourselves, but this behavior can also be subconscious. So unless we're paying attention to learning to listen to our bodies, you know, you, you're, if you're eating a clean, abundant amount of colorful fruits and veggies and water with exercise, you will feel sexier regardless of where you're at in your health journey. I've heard this theory, <clears throat> which I constantly share with my partner, eat less, sleep more. That's the key to living a longer life. And it's so true. If you eat less, like you don't need a 2000 plus calorie a day diet, unless you're like bodybuilding, but you, you can literally, I mean, there's, there's, I've, I've read studies about, and Amy hates studies, but I've read a lot of statistics <laughs> about how it like the less carbs your body has to, not carbs, I'm sorry, the less, um, caloric intake that your body, um, kind of digest on a daily and the more sleep you get can really affect the longevity of your life. Cause it's, it's totally a falsity that we're living longer. Now we've always lived long, right? We talked about yeah. that with, um, Chris yeah, Chris Ryan. So th do you believe in that theory or? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, to speak to that too, is that, you know, we don't have to eat so much and constantly because your body's working, your body, physical body is doing so much to digest long after you've eaten the meal, you know? So if, if you get to a place where you have that balance, especially with good sleep at night, which is, you know, sleep provides you the best healing benefits, you know, over everything else. You know what I mean? The, the, our body in sleep mode heals faster than any other time in the day. And so when we're in that state and your body's not over digesting or overworking itself, um, you absolutely can thrive with that, uh, in that, with that regimen, if you will. And, and what about, um, so desire, how does, uh, the, so the food and, and, and diet relate to desire? So, okay. So obviously we have to eat to live, right? So of course that's like a desire that's built right in. We don't, you know, you, you might get through, you might be able to skip breakfast, but you very rarely, you find people that will get through their whole day or a few days, but they're not eating, you know, you've got to eat that's built right in. So if we consider that what we choose to eat and drink can actually create more of those tingling sensations of desire for pleasure and satisfaction sexually, then, you know, who wouldn't want to pay attention to what they're eating and, you know, maybe meal plan this week and pick out a fun few new superfoods that are going to enhance yourself, uh, enhance your desire, um, your, your cravings for sex, um, and fulfillment. So everyone is different though. And it's, it's not a race to kind of get, to this place. So you want to be patient with yourself and life is a long time. So you want to strive to live it abundantly and full of joy. So if you start now by making tiny changes, you will eventually live a lifestyle that exudes clarity and mindfulness and pleasure and success and, and balance of mind, body, and spirit. But only of course, if you desire to do so, you know what I mean? So if it's a lack of desire sexually, find that desire every day to uh, make those conscious decisions that would be necessary for you to have the confidence that is so sexy. And, and you as a sexual being need to be nourished and loved and cared for. And one of the surefire ways that we can receive nourishment is with our food. So I think it's so sexy to eat sexy um, because it exudes a sexy body and you, you look like a sexual being, you know, you look more attractive, you're glowing.
So to our Just listeners, like when you blow from oh, an orgasm. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. An orgasm a day keeps that doctor away. Uh, if you, ha- so you talk about the sh- small changes to start. Can you share just with our listeners? Sure. I don't know your top three, or if you, you know, have something that's like a must that you suggest to your clients. Can you give them a little bit of to kind of get to, that? to a place where they're starting to make smaller changes? Exactly. I would, number one thing, and it sounds so easy, and most of these things sound so mundane and kind of silly and easy, but it's those little easy things that are easy not to do that are also easy to do, but at the end of the line, you know, per se, it it makes or breaks the situation, right, and your health entirely. So adding more water into your diet, crowding in as much water as you possibly can, you know, waking up first thing in the morning and having a large glass of warm water, even, even hot water, you know, sometimes people like to get the digestion, um, you know, their digestive system prepared with a nice hot cup of, uh, lemon water. And these are the types of things that will kind of instinctively trigger your body to make choices that are going to be less on the craving side, salt and savory and more on the, I need, you know, I need good chlorophyll. I need fiber. I need my greens, you know, and, and you'll start to crave the things that are better for you by just adding in more water. And so if you just put yourself through a test, you know, uh, look at your body weight, see what's um, necessary for you. I honestly tell everybody that five servings of, um, I think it's like between 24 and 32, 32 ounces a day. Um, five servings of that is usually good for everybody, honestly. And you don't want to go crazy about how much water you drink because too much water could be bad too. Right. Um, but water, 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 water is one of the number one things that I suggest to people and to just take inventory. So don't even think about all the things that you're eating and what could possibly be, um, the change that you need to make, or what do I need? What do I need to do to get there? Well, you want to start small by just taking inventory of what you do eat. You know what I mean? You may not know that at the end of your day, you experience a bloating or a discomfort or a pain because you're, you, you are consuming, you know, pizza or something that's not reacting to your body the way it would like, you know, your body would like, right? So if you take inventory of everything you're eating all week long, and at the end of the week, you look at your week and you go, man, I had two headaches. And I didn't feel so hot that day, but this day I was okay. Oh, well, look, like I had a salad for lunch, you know? So it's just little things like that. It's just becoming aware because what we, what I find is that we've kind of forgotten, um, that we have the ability to really know what's best for us, right? We, we want to just go to that white coat effect, get to the doctor. Oh, this is happening to me. What do I do? Well, the doctor is usually only going to provide you something that's going to suppress the symptoms. They're not going to take the time to really understand what the source is of your issue. And so by you deciding, okay, my car is like a vehicle and I'm no longer going to be um, completely... Um, blind to what's under the hood, I'm going to actually start getting in there and tinkering around, right? Because, you know, just like our cars, our body, if there was a roadmap, like our cars tell us, you have to do oil changes every three months. Well, what if translating to our bodies, what if a detox was necessary every few months for you? You know what I mean? Just little things like that, um, that can really change everything about what you're doing on a daily basis. And over time, just like I mentioned, those cravings of things that are not so good for you will eventually subside and you will crave things. Like nowadays I crave a salad like no other. I've never thought I'd ever like a salad like I do now. You know what I mean? It's just little things, artichokes, uh, mushrooms, things I thought I hated. Once you cut out sugar, sugar's like natural meth <laughs> and it it's, is. you crave it as soon as you have it often you totally want it more of it and I I don't have a lot of sugar and I don't ever crave it versus a lot of my friends are like I need dessert I'm like really right well aren't there studies right. that, that with um, the with the rats where actually sugar is found more addictive than cocaine yeah. that yes, the rats will go for the sugar times, yes nine times more addictive but it's on such a small scale that that's why we give it to our kids and we allow, you know, we drink sodas because we don't have like an 
like an instant reaction. You know what I mean? Like we're not slapping our wrists to get the next hit. You know what I mean? But when you walk into the grocery store after maybe being clean of dessert, like April, for example, you know, you're not, you don't crave it, but you can walk into somewhere and you can just smell the sugar, you know, being cooked or created or even in the packages. Um, once you start to get to a place where your body is more clean of that. Well, I do drink a lot of wine, so I guess that's my sugar. So it's not really <laughs> fair to totally say that I don't have any sugar, but I'm off the great. wine right now. Sadly. Oh, really? <laughs> I think wine is great. You know, honestly, res- there's, a, I, there's a lot of studies again with, for Amy, but, um, resveratrol is found in wine and, you know, some people live really, really, really long lives. I know there was some, uh, uh, uh interview with a woman who she was like 103 or four years old or something in Germany. And, uh, they were like, what do you eat and drink? drink. And, you know, she had a lot of chocolate and wine, but she was surrounded by people who love her. And she lived in this, you know, stress free, free kind of just free living lifestyle. You know what I mean? Um, and that's what so worked for her. Everyone, I'd like to clarify that I don't hate studies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that a lot of studies of, um, uh, are biased because of the pools of the of the humans that they are are um, surveying uh, are yes. often limited. Yeah, it's limited. I agree to- with you one hundred percent because there's a lot of um, you know when it pertains to food and dieting, for example. I don't really recommend diets for anybody. I think that it should be a lifestyle that you adapt to and what works for you is not going to work for your neighbor, your friend, your coworker, your sister, your brother, your uncle. What works for you works for you. And that might change from one week from now to a year from now. And it's so that's why it's so important to really know what works for you. And I agree with you that there's not a lot of independent studies out there that are un, that are not biased, you know what I mean, that are really giving you the facts information for you to kind of decide on your own. There's a lot of, uh, things out there that pretend to be facts and are just paid for facts. You know what I mean? Well, and, and that's, yeah, a lot. And I think when it comes to like the USDA and all these, these folks that are actually having studies are the ones that are probably potentially not all of them, but a lot of them are, are lobbying so that they can make I'm not saying this right, but they can make more money. They're the ones that are funding the study so that they can can prove that their stuff is good. Milk paid for you by the U.S. Dairy Commission. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) Absolutely. Or or like the the cereal thing, right? The the, the breakfast is the most important meal of the day theory and was, was by the cereal companies. Right. Um, So which so that you would buy their cereal. So I so I think with studies. I don't want to disregard them, but I think it's important to consider them and also question at the same time. You know, have have question the source. Absolutely. I mean, the eat less, sleep more study was performed by very reliable sources. (laughs) Well, because no one's going to make money. Who's going to make money off of that? (laughs) The mattress company? I don't know. (laughs) Right, 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 right. And that's that's what we need more of is um, more information that's out there that's genuinely helping people. Uh, understand like really the reality of it, you know, that you don't have to rely on your, you know, health insurance these days can be as much as a sec, you know, a second mortgage. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty bad. And so when I talk about this with people, I tell, I said, listen, don't let anyone tell you what you need to do. You got to make that decision for yourself because guess what? They're not paying your health insurance and guess what? They're not paying for you to get in and out of the hospital when you're in old age. And it's, it's much, much harder to take care of yourself and bounce back from what you've been nourishing yourself with this whole time or malnourishing yourself with. It's always preventative measures are so much better than after the fact when you're, you've been eating, I don't know, cheeseburgers every day for the last 15 years. And all of a sudden you're like, I have high cholesterol. (laughs) Right. Yep. Yep. You sure do. (laughs) Exactly. And so it's those things that it's like, man, and then it becomes like, like you said, it's becomes like almost an addiction. Not only is sugar available, you know, in like the sweets, there's a lot of sugar in your packaged foods that are, you know, for dinner. There's a lot of and sodium. Uh, things... Sorry, so I'm... much sodium in the packaged yep. foods, sugar and Absolutely. sodium. Absolutely. And what? And so I, when? Oh, go, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. I'm not, I, I just I love you said erectile dysfunction. So when if you want to finish your point, and then I would love for you yeah. to comment on how food relates to that because uh, it's, that was our listeners. That was a curious. perfect. That was a perfect segue because it, it, it like. If a gentleman goes his whole life eating fried, fatty, you know, foods, meats and cheeses, and he gets to a place in his life where he's experiencing erectile dysfunction, 
you know, what is the reason for that? You're, you're, it's a high fat, high cholesterol intake of your diet. What's happening is your arteries are being choked off of the blood flow. You're clearly, we know your penis needs a good blood flow in order to have them and maintain a nice, hard and satisfying erection. Well, what, what can we do to get there? Well, you just want to start opening up those arteries, cleansing yourself. You can easily detox yourself and move towards a whole food plant-based diet that will actually help you get to a place where you have that increased blood flow. And, um, you know, Viagra is another thing that I, I, it's like, it's so terrible, so bad. And it's, and it almost says, you know, chemically it does kind of like this opposite thing for men in order to increase the blood flow. So it's, seemingly so much more damaging and, and it really is. And so if, if, if someone just knew and was aware that naturally and through whole food and diet, they can be this super rock hard hero. Well, why wouldn't they pay attention, especially if that's something that they're struggling with and is, you know, deteriorating their confidence. Right. So there's so many foods that, I mean, they talk about superfoods, like superfoods are so popular and they're increasingly gaining, you know, you know, uh, what do they call it when it's trending? Right. But I think honestly, any whole food is a superfood, you know what I mean? Avocados and onions and celery and, you know, watermelons, watermelons, actually by juicing the watermelon rind, you're getting more chlorophyll and more chloroline than in the rest of the fruit. And a gentleman can give himself a real, almost like a Viagra boost by having um, three servings of watermelon a day or juicing that rind. I recommend just juicing the rind um, because you just get so much more um, nutrient dense uh, uh, juice from that. But the watermelon is delicious anyway. So eat the whole watermelon, do what you want with it. The more you get it at, the more you will feel yourself having those harder, stronger, longer erections. And the same thing for women. So increased blood flow for us um, increases the ability to have, uh, the, the clit, the clitoris swell the way it's supposed to. And the, uh, cause women can have erectile dysfunction too. It's just not visible. So there's clitoral dysfunction or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Clitoral erectile insufficiency. And so it's basically the same thing is happening in that little tiny, tiny clitoris. But if you think about it, the, the, the artery that links up to the clitoris is like a pin size versus the penile artery for men is almost like a coin size. So it's much quicker for women to run into this issue because of the lack of blood flow to their clitoris. When we increase the blood flow to the clitoris, we increase the vaginal lubricity, we increase, we balance our hormones, and we get to a place where we're in, a, 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 where our energy wants and desires more sexual satisfaction. I love all of this. This is awesome. And this brings me to a question about aphrodisiacs. Um, because okay. the understanding of aphrodisiacs, you know, there, I mean, there's there's different components here. There's one is like the emotional component of desire and turn on. And another one is like the physical, like, oh, I can feel the, you know, my genitals pulsating. Oh, thanks, um, right. Yeah. And so, um, but I'm wondering what, what are you, what are your thoughts on aphrodisiacs? You know, are they real? And if so, what are some of your favorites? Okay. So I think absolutely that they are real. I believe in plant-based aphrodisiacs. So things like I mentioned before, cinnamon and maca and, fen well, I said uh, like onion and celery before, but fenugreek and acai, these are all whole food, uh, plant-based aphrodisiacs. Now you may not take a shot of this or add it to a smoothie or oatmeal and feel those sensations like you just described. But over time, obviously, and compounded in your body, it will be like your normal everyday energy, you know, eventually. But I do believe that there is those qualities that can come from herbal supplements and like essential oils. So there's a way to make, you know, aphrodisiac oil, uh, you know, topical um, or things that just you can just, um, what do they call it, diffuse into the air that give you those kind of um, emotional sensations where you can almost the, the because of your, your increasing the sensations of a smell and, um, um, sight. And, um, I don't even know what, what my point really was with the essential oil diffusion, but <laughs> just another way to add arouse in, your senses, right. To arouse your senses c completely. So all six senses, you know what I mean? Um, even the one that's like, you know, your 
your your, your soul, uh, your own sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> what, you, <laughs> what you get when you're in yoga and you're holding that position for like way too long and you're like, mother of God, <laughs> you just tap into it. But um, I absolutely believe in that. And I believe that um, all foods should really be considered superfoods that maintain, you know, high oxidants and, and give you those aphrodisiacs, if you will, um, that will, that will essentially make you live a longer lasting, healthy sexual life for sure. So are these aphrodisiacs something you should consume before you're going to like go out uh, on a date night with a, maybe a somebody in general, or maybe you're just going I out mean, seeing what's out there? So, okay. So it's like the pheromone effect, right? Obviously if you believe in it, and you put yourself through a process, a ritual, if you will, then hell yeah, I would recommend, you know, have a cup of, you know, fennel tea with some coriander in it or something like that and, and get out there instead of, you know, taking a Viagra or a supplement or these, you know, penis popping promise pills from 7-Eleven, you know what I mean? Something that you can, you can still get from a vitamin supplement. So if you want to do that beforehand, then absolutely, because if you believe in it, then it'll work better for you. But I I just really recommend just incorporating these things throughout your life every day, all day. You know what I mean? For example, like co cocoa powder, that's one of my favorite things. Um, and maca root, right. In in powder form, you just want to add them to your oats, add them to your smoothie. You know, you have it in the morning with your oats, you have it in this, in a salad for your, uh, you know, uh, your lunch and maybe a smoothie later for a snack. You know, it's just incorporating them in small, I put maca in my way. coffee because it's it, it's really actually good. It adds like this nice little because it doesn't have a lot of flavor. It's like nutty. No, it doesn't. It's very nutty though. It has a real nutty, creamy. You wouldn't think it was like a root, really. Um, that kind of reminds you of a turnip, but um, it, it 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 is. It's very nutty and creamy, and it kind of like you said, it doesn't taste much like anything. So putting it into oatmeal, putting it into smoothies, shaking a little bit on your salad. I mean, these are things that you can do that are almost tasteless but give you that amplified effect inside of your body that you will see uh, the effects of. You will feel the increase of energy. You will feel the, you know, the sustained, um, um, the sustained ability to go, you know, number two session, number three session, number four session, you know. But it's definitely a compounded thing that you want to incorporate over time. It's not just going to be like, oh, I'm going to try maca root today and I had a teaspoon of it. Oh, and it didn't make me, you know, it, I was still dry while I was having sex earlier. I just had, wasn't into it. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to probably be an instant effect, but it will become a lasting effect over time if you're just consuming it on a, on a regular. And I think so. The, the the thing you're talking about with some of the foods like, um, you know, chocolate and watermelon, it's um, the the ingredient that we're looking for, or I guess it's the amino acid or um, is uh, nitric oxide. Um, sure. Or I guess it's not, I mean, not the amino acid. Amino acid is arginine and some other things. But um, and so it's things that are, are boosting, they are good for the heart and for blood flow. And then in turn, what you're saying is that it can also be related to your genitals and to your sex drive. Exactly. So, so like you were saying, you know, dark chocolate. Um, citrus is another one, pomegranate, walnuts, which is also brain food, mm -hmm. arugula, mm -hmm. spinach, watermelon. Like you said, when you said rind, is rind the green part? Yeah. Okay, it is yes. the green part. Yeah. So you juice the green part. I've never I done that. that. Mm. I'm, I'm excited uh -huh. to try that. With a little bit of lemon and leave some of the watermelon on it. You know what I mean? Don't com oh. you know completely clean the watermelon what rind about the out. Seeds? Absolutely. Can you juice the seeds? Um, I, I guess so. Okay. I assume so. You can eat them, right? Yeah. No, because you'll grow a watermelon in your belly. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you'll become the watermelon. <laughs> Don't you remember hearing that as a kid? If, if you eat yes, the watermelon, so you grow a watermelon in your belly. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be really big. I don't want that. No, but yeah. And what? And to speak to what you were saying uh, to Amy is what I'm talking about is not going to Trader Joe's and getting their 50% dark chocolate bar with a side berry in it and thinking that, you know, you're, <laughs> you know, you're giving yourself this sexual aphrodisiac boost. Well, I mean, yeah, you essentially that that's kind of like the basis of what you're doing. But really what you're looking for is that whole ingredient, that cacao powder. So if you buy that in whole form and you make your own chocolate bar, now we're talking, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I think the 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 best chocolate is going to be, I think, a minimum of seventy percent uh, cacao. Yeah. But if you can do eighty percent, it's even better. Um, My favorite is eighty eight percent. Oh yeah, damn girl, you like it better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then some other foods on here. I'm looking at this list are also beets um, and. Uh, garlic too. Ooh, that's some just yes. some other things. So y'all can make your list and start eating more of these things and yeah. see what happens. Garlic with the penis. doesn't seem sexy because it gives you it might make you uh, have someone move away from you a yeah. little bit far. But but yes, garlic. I say it's one of the cheapest medicines you can find in the entire world. Garlic does so much for you, and if you just eat it whole as a regimen too, it can. I mean, I've heard of men. Um, healing themselves rectally from like anal, I mean, it sounds terrible, but from like anal bleeding by just shoving the garlic up there for a couple of days. Same with if you have, a, yes, a yeast infection mm-hmm. or b- people shove a clove of garlic. I put it on, can we put it in gracefully? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't shove it. We, we gracefully insert. Did I say shove? Yeah. <laughs> place, just place the garlic in there. <laughs> That's cute. Um, yeah, so I, I like so all these things. And then what, what about, um, you can also get arginine as a supplement, I think. Is argi- so one thing mm-hmm. I know about arginine, if you get cold sores or have the herpes virus, arginine is not your, not a good friend. You probably not don't want to take it as a supplement, but you can get it at your local health food store and it, and it's also can work as like a natural Viagra. Right. Okay. I haven't heard that. That's wonderful. It's like one of the main ingredients when you buy, buy something that's supposed to, what they call the dick pills, you know, when you buy them at a, um. Uh, Mm -hmm. like a sex shop and you look at the ingredients usually it'll have like ginseng and arginine i don't think ginseng does too much for for erections but um but arginine (laughs) is uh is a i think it was a vasodilator it does it does work in that regard i think that's the right word yeah yeah you know and honestly men in that on that speaking to that men really i think love anything that they know that can really help them and if you if they're just aware that you know just to find it in its whole natural and even if it's best organic form, you know what I mean? Then they don't have to buy the over the counter seven eleven pills that are heavily processed. And not Who only knows that, what's in those things. Morning goat right? weed. <laughs> I don't know what they actually put the stuff inside of those actual they're capsules, not but either, they're so not, not the yeah, they're not heavily really regulated. And they're colorful too. So I mean, honestly, like I don't know. You might like have little glow in the dark pills all in your belly if you go under a UV <laughs> light or something. I just got some. Um, apparently, I was just at a trade show in Miami. I got back like uh, I don't know two days ago, and there were so many pill people there um, have, at the retreat. And I have a lot of samples, and I'm like, these pills. A lot of um, I, I don't know what's in them. I haven't looked at the ingredients. Some of the packaging is really cool, but I'm going to try this one that says it's supposed to increase um blood flow and sensitivity it looks like mostly natural and it's supposed to make me super lubricated so i'm just gonna see i'm not gonna drink a lot of water just just because the one that that makes you squirt like it's supposed to give you a squirting orgasm i don't know i'm gonna drink i'm not gonna i'm not sure i have to read it but (laughs) one in particular just because to see if it works no you need water with those pills though you'll actually get a a huge headache like if you don't drink water with with those with those pills because they have niacin in them too usually Mm -hmm. you'll actually could feel really hungover from it okay and i'm not drinking so i'd be really disappointed if i felt hungover <laughs> yeah you don't want to yeah do i don't know what the name of the one i'm thinking of is i think it was like tsunami or something like that <laughs> are you a tsunami pussy they really yeah. change those pills all the time and there's always new ones yeah. so always always so, i don't ever really recommend those but if they yeah. are filled with um plant but like um there's a lot of vitamin supplements that say that they can change the flavor of your um, secretions as well. And, you know, I believe in those, but I also believe that you can get that same effect with your, your diet. You can juice those same fruit. Um, yeah, absolutely. And get that vitamin C blast. And so that it does taste really delicious, you know? So there's definitely always a way that you can go in the whole, in the whole form, but if you're just not there yet, I mean, like I said, good, better, best, you know what I mean? You're going to make tiny moves. It's not about getting to the best, best place first, you know, as quickly as you can. You just want to take small changes and small steps that will get you from good to better to best eventually. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of do like a little, a little summarization of that. So it really sounds like what you're saying is when we are what we eat, that if you're having any sort of health issues to look at your diet and that we can change 
um, the things that we eat and, and incorporate more whole foods and you know healthy fruits and vegetables and things that can really affect our health and our sexuality in a beautiful way. And it's different for everyone. So there isn't one rule of thumb that applies to everyone. So this is kind of where your work comes in is you work with people and help them to figure out um, where they're at, what they individually need, and then make a plan and help them from there, correct? Absolutely. That's exactly, you hit it right on the nose. And um, really, it's about what they come, you know, they might come to me only wanting to lose 10 pounds, you know what I mean? But we might find by the third session that sexually, they are emotionally, you know, unconfident because they feel like their lover doesn't look at them anymore. Their husband of 30 years doesn't, uh, you know, look at them the same anymore. And they just want to feel their sexy self. You know what I mean? So it can always evolve to something so much deeper than the 10 pounds. Because the first question I would ask is what is going to make you different about losing those 10 pounds? And it usually will stem into those beautiful, beautiful uh, things that we get to and topics that we get to that really help them uncover like an onion, just peel back the layers of what is the source of what's really going to give us that sexual empowerment. And uh, because really, I think that the sexual empowerment is a really baseline kind of for everything else. Uh, Because when we feel our sexual best self as a human being, it allows all those other areas of our lives to be fulfilled. You know what I mean? Because, you know, when you're in a relationship and when you're not in a relationship, you eat and treat yourself so much differently. So having that love and having that sexual confidence um, and being able to maintain that in your life is so important. So when, when you live in that vibration of love for yourself, you will always have the universe bring you these gifts of, um, you know, everything that's aligned for what you need and what your passions are. And how can people work with you? Uh, well, they can give me a call. I've got um, honeybeehealing.net as my website. And uh, usually I just ask everybody to go through a, a free a discovery conversation is what I like to call it, where we just learn about each other. We go through about 30, 45 minutes of kind of figuring out where you're at, what your goals are, and if it makes sense to work together. And then we can um, develop a program that works specifically around what, you know, your schedule is like, what you're, you, what you can afford. Um, but I do have a program called, um, the happy healing program, which is my most effective program. It's a six month program where we meet up every two weeks and we just kind of discuss what we, uh, set in place as a goal or uh, something to strive towards that the previous two weeks before that and just kind of see how we get and evolve. And usually people by the third month are so excited that the the changes that they're experiencing in their bodies uh, is just really empowering them and giving them this hunger and this drive for more and more and more. What can I do to feel even better? If I could do this, I can do that. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, I love that. I and I and when it comes to sex, April and I often talk about not having goals when it comes to the actual pleasure part. But this okay. this is different, everyone, in terms of um, if there's something that you're desiring more of that is uh, something that you can personally work on on your own than the, sometimes okay. having goals and having assistance in those goals. You know, someone to hold you uh, not only accountable, but also help inspire you who has knowledge yeah. and guidance can really help you to get where you want to go as opposed to trying to do it all on your own. Yes, thank you. That is so important because... Absolutely. Why uh, I feel a a health coach is so important, whether it's me or anybody out there. If you um, are going through any kind of situation in your life, sometimes it's just like going out and getting a a personal trainer. A lot of people don't go to the gym because they're completely, you know, uh, they're so fearful of one, what people think and two, what they're going to look like in there, not knowing anything about any of the tools or uh, what they can use um, to get to the place that they need to go. And then if they are able to finally get themselves in there. What do they do next after they do the treadmill? What do they, you know, they don't have like an outline. So that's why you get a personal trainer. Well, I'm somebody between the doctor, between the personal trainer that really kind of helps you figure out how the balance of all your regimens is going to work for you. Mostly people that see me that are already prescribed prescriptions are in, um, they have the desire to get rid of prescription drugs. So they want to work more towards a holistic way of healing themselves and thriving in that direction. Um, but yes, definitely goals um, are important and to have to, and to surround yourself with people who are positive energy sources and want to see you in your best place and uh, also want to be help you be aligned in what really works perfect, what works best for you. Awesome, Melissa. Thank you so much. What, can you say your website one more time? 
Sure. It's honeybeehealing.net. And, um, yeah, you can just email me there, uh, through there or hbholistic at gmail, uh, dot com. And yeah, I would be happy and, and open to hear from anybody and, um, always looking to help. This is definitely my passion. Um, like I mentioned, I went through my own struggle. Um, I kind of basically healed myself of candida gut. And this was something that once I realized that that was going on in my body, I kind of was able to trace it all the way back to when I was a little girl, you know, four or five years old. I was in that hospital for UTI infections, bladder infections, kidney infections. You know, I was constipated. I was all these, all these issues that by the time I got to my 20s and I was sexually active, it became a real struggle and issue for me to feel sexually confident in my own body. And uh, once I was able to, like I said, find that breakthrough, it, it kind of just changes your whole life. And it's so amazing. It's so powerful. So there you go, listeners out there. If you want to make <laughs> some awesome shifts, changes to your physical body, your mental health, uh, get uh, outreach to talk to our girl, Melissa over there <laughs> and see thank what you. she can do for you. And Melissa, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I hope I get to see you in person soon. Thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in. We'll see you next Tuesday, the Tuesday after that. See you next Tuesday and ciao <laughs> for now. All right. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> all right. Bye girls. Bye. Don't forget to head on over to our website, shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of your favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.